Hello, I'm Rian and I've been appreciating the one walk a day that we've been allowed to take in these strange times um, and I've really been enjoying the nature and the beginnings of summer and all the flowers starting to bloom and I've been gathering some small wildflowers on my walks like dandelions and little bluebells so obviously not to take things from people's gardens or specifically planted areas but things like this wisteria fallen on the floor from a tree it's fine uh, small leaves and individual petals as well and I've been pressing them and making greetings cards like these so I'm going to take you through how to do this step by step now. So step one, you gather your flowers. So like I said, things like small leaves, petals, um, and dandelions and daisies. Step two, pressing your flowers. So you can either use a flower press or a book so I'll show you both methods. So to use a flower press you unscrew the little screws take off the lid and then it should have a series of layers of paper and cardboard. So your flowers are going to go in the middle of two sheets of paper. It can just be scrap paper. Um, so you want to distribute your flowers evenly over the surface of the paper. And if you've got something quite chunky like a dandelion, I recommend taking the stalk off so there's less moisture and then starting to flatten it down a bit already. And then you put the other paper back on top, put your cardboard on top so that it's sandwiched between two pieces of card and replace the lid, tighten your screws as tight as they can possibly go and then just leave it somewhere for two weeks. Um, if you can leave it a little bit longer even better three weeks would be ideal but if you can't wait two weeks will probably do it if you want to use a book then exactly the same method but instead of sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard you're going to put your paper in the back of a book so the biggest heaviest book you can find in your house and then you can use scrap paper and again lay your flowers and leaves spread them out all over the surface. Another piece of paper goes on top and then close the book. You might want to leave your paper sticking out a little bit at the top so you can remember where it was and then if you've got some more big heavy books in your house then you can layer them on top just to give some extra weight to make sure that they're really pressed down and it'll speed up the whole process. Step three, take some uh, card or what I've actually used is watercolour paper and I've ripped the edges to give it 
that kind of nice natural effect to go with my nature theme. So I just folded and ripped the edges so the edge has gone all fluffy. Okay, so step four, you want to draw a shape on the front of your card. So I'm using this masking tape to draw a circle. So it can be any shape as long as it's fairly simple. So you could do a heart or a star or even somebody's initial. But I'm just gonna keep it simple for now and do a circle. So now that I've got my circle, I'm gonna work around this um, to start creating a design. So I've got my pressed flowers here to use. So anything that's got a stem is quite nice around the edges of a shape because you can start to use the stem as a kind of line. So what I usually do is lay out my design how I want it. So you might want to play around with a few different designs um, before you glue, glue it down. So I'm going to do that now. So, step five. Once you're happy with your design, you can glue it down. So, I'm just going to move things out of the way. And then, I'm going to start on the outer ring first. I'm just using a small paintbrush and some PVA glue. I'm just going to put my glue in this jam jar lid and I'm just going to go all the way around the edge of my circle and paint a thin line of glue. Here's my finished card, so you might even want to write a little note to somebody and pop it in the post. Um, thanks for watching and good luck with your flower pressing. Bye!